Hello and welcome to UC Today. I'm Tom Wright and I'm delighted to be joined by Devon from Fate to Lake. How's it going, Devon? It's good to see you again. Hey, it's great to see you too, Tom. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you back. I'm really looking forward to this one. But before we kind of get into our discussion around hybrid work and the return to the office, could you just give us a quick overview of the Theta to Lake and your role, please? Sure, absolutely. So I'm Devin Redmond. I'm the CEO, co-founder of Theta Lake. Uh, been in the security and compliance space uh, personally, professionally for more than 25 years now. Uh, I'm a two-time co-founder and CEO uh, at Theta Lake. We have a, a mission and a vision to do compliance and security for modern unified communication and collaboration tools. Uh, what that means is we solve everything from capture and integration with third-party archives uh, to native cloud and unified cloud archiving uh, for all modalities of UC content. And then in addition to that, we have the ability to leverage uh, advanced uh, machine learning with AI to assist compliance and security reviewers pinpoint risks in their communications that they may need to deal with from a regulatory perspective or uh, from an insider risk and a, a data exposure perspective. Great, okay, and obviously what you guys do is really important, but before we dig into that, so we maybe set the scene of kind of uh, in the UC landscape. I just wonder if you could talk through where you're seeing UC investment going at the moment, and just maybe give us an idea of whether you think organizations are really getting the benefit out of that investment. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a great question. It's a very interesting time uh, in the space. Uh, obviously, during the pandemic time, uh, organizations had to massively change and upgrade their communication infrastructure towards new UC tools. Uh, and that was a, you know, a, a great boost in terms of the ability to add productivity to leverage new capabilities and features, but it was a little bit messy and organizations that uh, had the highest regulatory requirements and security needs uh, tended to deploy those tools oftentimes with many of the features and capabilities turned off. And, you know, they had to do that because they have very tight control infrastructures. Uh, these tools oftentimes um, introduce new features and modalities of communications that they didn't have a good process uh, underlying, nor the technology in their legacy uh, archiving and compliance tools, which were typically either built for voice recording or uh, for email archiving. Um, but they didn't have a mechanism with those tools to really enable those new features. And so the first path uh, was to maintain the status quo and turn off any feature that wasn't supported um, by their legacy infrastructure. Challenge that introduced, obviously, is that's a lot of features functionality that you end up probably turning off in those platforms. Uh, and that really creates a burden from an ROI perspective, right? You're not getting the most out of these tools that you spent so much money on that you've uh, onboarded so many users on. Uh, and that's not a great thing if you're the UC buyer and owner, because typically it means you have kind of unhappy end users uh, that don't get to operate what I would call in, in kind of the real world, the natural environment uh, that their customers and partners are operating in. So there's a drag from that perspective. Uh, the additional drag is they often don't get the productivity benefit, right? So it's actually a, a hit on the ROI of the tools themselves because they're not using the features that were designed to improve productivity, that were designed to make a meeting great or give you the full functionality of uh, a chat and collaboration platform where you're sharing files and images and maybe recordings and you're initiating calls. All of those things become handicapped uh, in, uh, uh, in a variety of ways that, that impacts ROI all for the purpose of maintaining compliance. So it's not to say that you don't have to think about compliance in those scenarios and without a better way to deal with compliance, organizations were kind of forced into that mode. Uh, but I would say that's not not the case anymore and, and it's time for kind of a re-examining of that uh, to accommodate ROI, to improve unification, and frankly, to reduce costs at the end of the day. Yeah, so I think it's, you know, you can maybe see why some organizations had to do that very quickly at the start of the pandemic. But are you seeing that change now? Is this something that organizations are, are kind, of, kind of getting on board with and realizing that now is the time to unlock this? And if so, what kind of challenges are they facing? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so uh, when we go as Theta Lake and we're talking to customers, I think one of their biggest initiatives, uh, especially, you know, given what you might call turbulent economic times uh, and the reality that everybody has to reconcile all these tools that they've enabled over the last little bit, 
is an initiative to both get the most out of the tools that they've invested in and, and really try and unify and consolidate a little bit better uh, the feature sets and the capabilities that they've invested in. Uh, and also deal with all of these uh, compliance and risk requirements uh, that have emerged since they've adopted them. And, and frankly, if you look through the lens of the regulators uh, for verticals like financial services, uh, you're seeing a, a pretty clear uh, set of statements and corresponding actions that they really care about your efficacy and record keeping on new capabilities and tools. And, and there's a very clear cause and effect uh, that's happened over the last couple of years, right? As those organizations that were most concerned about adopting those new tools, uh, disabled features in them, what ends up happening is their end users uh, who often become frustrated because they're uh, trying to get their job done. They're trying to communicate with their end users and their partners or their customers and their partners uh, end up going around because it is very easy in today's world of cloud-based communication tools and applications uh, to uh, abandon the uh, uh, tool that is not fully abled in your environment in favor of something that you can quickly communicate on. Uh, and I'll, gi I'll give an example of one of the top use cases that we help customers with. Uh, w which sounds like a very simple thing and sounds like, well, you know, maybe it's not such a big deal, uh, but most regulated organizations, and in fact, in a, in a survey Theta Lake did uh, last year with over 500 compliance and IT professionals uh, in regulated verticals, uh, they disable features such as in-meeting chat and Q&A and polling that happen inside of meetings, which you might think, eh, not, you know, okay, fine, those are disabled. The reality is it's a pretty staggering downstream impact on the ROI and on compliance in parallel. Uh, so imagine we're in a meeting, we can't chat with each other in the meeting. Uh, first thing that typically happens is users that need to clarify or ask a question or refer to something if there's no in-meeting chat will uh, divert their attention from that meeting uh, and go to a different messaging app. Uh, and so now suddenly you've got split focus in the meeting. Uh, you have people that are not paying attention, which means that not only is it not productive meeting, it also means that tool that you've spent so much money on uh, from a meeting perspective uh, is now not being used fully uh, and you have to use two tools to do one job. Second ramification though, and perhaps more importantly, is when they go away from that app to do their messaging, there's uh, two scenarios. One, maybe they go to an internal messaging tool that already exists, right? Another chat application where they ask the quick questions. Uh, but equally likely, uh, especially up until recently in the volume of finds on this, they may go to a personal app uh, that may be unmonitored in that situation uh, to ask questions. So now you've created the very scenario that regulators are finding you for, that you yourself as an organization is trying to, um, are trying to uh, remove, which is unmonitored communications out of the mix. You've actually created the impetus to drive unmonitored communication. So poor ROI and productivity, uh, high likelihood of a compliance issue uh, induced by by your own controls. And then downstream from that, if you think about the impact on the compliance professionals, in that scenario where maybe it does go to a monitored messaging tool, uh, chat or something else, uh, they're getting fragmented pieces of context, right? Somebody's saying, hey, on slide five, that looked really good. We should probably go all in on that. Uh, something that would probably trigger an alert or a review in a compliance system, but it's missing any context whatsoever. It's not to say that you need to capture what they shared or showed in that meeting, but you should know what meeting it was and who was in that meeting at the time so that you can assess if you need to do a, a deeper investigation. Certainly you could capture everything from a meeting with a tool like Theta Lake, but um, at the very least to keep compliance professionals efficient, uh, not running down a rabbit hole trying to find loose ends and tie it together uh, giving them the full context uh, and being able to at least provide that is a huge boost to their efficiency and productivity. And so all of that uh, from simply turning off in meeting chat. And those are the types of conversations that we're having with customers uh, today, which is how do I fix all these loopholes, improve my productivity, make it so that I don't have to have five different tools to do one thing in a meeting versus having one meeting with full features capable uh, inside of it. 
And then alongside this is that wasn't enough. You've got the uh, the return to the office trend, which has proven to be a bit of a battle for some organisations and certainly rumbling on as they try and kind of land on uh, the right strategy for them. So what kind of dynamic does that bring when you throw that into the mix? And what are the kind of added risks to what we've already discussed? Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a there's a, a, a famous silly saying, which is it's it's like deja vu all over again. Right. We, we talked about return to the office as the pandemic started to subside. Uh, but I think there was a, a lot of, of work that still needed to be done uh, across organizations. Now we're really starting to see the dust settle and organizations kind of reconcile how often you're in the office, who needs to be in the office when they need to be there. But I think the thing that was missed is somehow UC got associated with remote. And I uh, I don't understand how th those two things are so closely linked together because the reality is um, what happened during the pandemic, yes, maybe was driven or, or had a catalyst from everybody moving remotely, but really essentially what it was is a instant modernization of the communication and collaboration infrastructure to digital cloud-based uh, multimodal communications where you can be in a chat like i said earlier that initiates a, a video meeting that uh, comes back with a link to you know whether it's a sharepoint or a box site or it's a third-party whiteboard or a native whiteboard all of those things completely meshed and that communication infrastructure frankly has uh, supplanted the primacy of the tools we used before. Yes, you still make voice calls, but you're probably doing it on a cloud-based infrastructure. Yes, everybody still has email and still uses email, but probably more often than not, you're also spending more of your time in your chat application during the day and you're using email in a very different way uh, and at very different times during the day. And so the return to the office shouldn't have an illusion of more safety or more compliance or less risk um, because frankly, the communication stack has changed and organizations are needing to still reconcile what they're doing from a compliance perspective, whether it's around capture and archiving, whether it's around proactive compliance uh, from you know insider risk and checking data exposure to doing deep surveillance on highly regulated users like traders and financial services all of those things are still big kind of question marks or exclamation points of these need to be solved uh, regulators are expecting it issues are popping up more and more frequently in terms of making sure that you know who's communicating where and you've got good coverage for the guardrails that you need to put in place there. Okay, Devin, I have sort of one final question for you to sort of wrap all this up. And there, um, there's a quite big implication for organizations, aren't there, if they get some of this wrong. So I just wanted to talk through how you at Data Lake can help them kind of get around some of these, or not get around them, to, to solve some of these challenges. Um, and also give us an idea of where you'll be focusing over the next few months at Theta Lake. Yeah, that, that, that's terrific. So uh, at Theta Lake, Theta Lake, like I said, um, we're very focused on the space. In fact, we're the only compliance vendor with direct financial backing from Zoom, Salesforce, and, and you know the crew uh, at Slack, Ring Central, Cisco across the collaboration group, uh, executives from Microsoft, uh, as well as backing from financial services institutions like Wells Fargo, uh, uh, in in our mix, uh, and, and so. Uh, with that as an area of focus, this is very much in our wheelhouse. And what we've really learned and helped organizations with is how do you adopt those new features with the lowest amount of disruption, right? So I gave that case earlier, of turning on things like an in-meeting chat. Well, we don't require a customer to change all of their legacy tools and infrastructure at once. We have a very clear one, two, three approach, which is Phase one is how do you turn on those new modalities and bridge potentially coverage gaps uh, and allow you to capture those records and then get them in the places where you're expecting to do retention or archiving or recording and keeping voice recordings uh, and then um, service all those compliance users downstream. So that's, that's kind of phase one, low disruption, 
high ROI from enabling those new features, uh, adding value to end users. Phase two is improving your ability to navigate that content. How do you search that mesh of conversations over multiple tools across the timeline, uh, follow participants and how they communicate with each other across different tools? That's a phase two that, that Theta Lake helps customers with, with things like a unified conversation replay, a timeline view for documents and chat. Uh, so that's our phase two. And then a phase three is really helping organizations dig in using things like machine learning and AI assisted review to pinpoint risks inside of those communications. And, and to do that by different demographics, highly regulated users, workplace abuse across uh, the rest of your organization, all of those types of things. But it all starts with a very clear way to immediately add value uh, by doing what we call smart capture uh, and allowing organizations to turn on features and enable more of their UC platform without disrupting the downstream compliance tools and processes that they have in place, and then slowly helping them on that journey to modernizing their review process. Uh, and, and Theta Lake's been uh, uh, doing this now for five years, uh, directly with the backing of the key platform players out there. We've had a very high success rate in uh, adding ROI to our customers while also improving their compliance posture uh, to the point now where we're just at 100 customers in financial services alone in a highly regulated vertical um, uh, spread of, of our customer base with a footprint in the US, in Canada, in the UK, in Europe, in Australia, New Zealand, and customers across all of those regions uh, using our product for, for those use cases. So w we really think we're in a good position to help organizations, whether they're in the office, whether they're working remotely, uh, really embrace the power of UC and collaboration tools. So. That's great, Devin. It's been great speaking to you again. It's such an interesting topic. And I dare say in six months time, when we speak again, there'll be another trend thrown into the mix that we'll have to consider as well. But in the meantime, it's been great talking to you. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, likewise. I'm always happy to, to participate and uh, get a chance to, to talk with you. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, everyone, for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a quick like and a share on social media. And we'll see you next time.